Okay, uh, welcome back. This is going to be the third and most likely final video for the pre-flight sheets at Kansas State. Uh, this sheet in particular is the Cessna pre-flight sheet and on the back is the weight and balance. Um, we're going to be going over both sides today. Um, I was unable to bring the purple book home with me that has all of our numbers in there. So I went ahead and printed them off on separate sheets. So if you're having trouble seeing anything during this video, feel free to pause and zoom in. Um, also, this is probably gonna be a little bit of a longer video. So if you need uh, help with a specific section, uh, just check down on the timestamps uh, will be in the description below. Uh, what I mean by that is if you know how to do the maintenance section, but you need help with the performance section, uh, go ahead and just click on that down below. I'll have them titled uh, each section as we go along. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're using K-State 18 today. So we're going to start by putting in our aircraft ID, which is November 818 Kilo Sierra. Don't worry about putting the lesson in. And the date, today's date is January 26th of 21. Um, so now that we have that filled out, we're gonna go ahead and move down to our uh, maintenance check. This section, first section on the left here. Um, for our tack time. So our tack time, uh, we wanna go ahead and open up. It's, I believe, the second page in the purple book where we can pull up our numbers. Um, again, we can see K-State 18 right here. Uh, and then we have our total time, which is what TT stands for, and then our TAC time. So uh, if you remember from when we were doing our ground lesson, we need to get our updated TAC time. They do not update the sheets in the purple book every day. Uh, they do it every now and then. So what we need to do is um, go on the computer and go to ETA to find our current tack time. But before we do that, we need to go ahead and subtract the tack time that is on the purple sheet or in the purple book from the total time. So in order to do that, we're going to take 7,738.1. Uh, and minus that by, again, the tack time that's on the sheet, which is 868.0, and we'll subtract that out. Okay, so once we uh, subtract these out, uh, you can use your calculator or in your head, whatever you prefer, we get 6,870.1. That is our number that we're gonna have. Um, but just like we talked about in our ground school again, we need to go on to ETA and figure out exactly what the current tack time is. They update it on ETA every day after every flight. So we're gonna take that, uh, our current tack time on ETA, and add it on to this number we just got, and that will give us our current tack time. So I'll meet you back on the computer. Computer, and uh, we're gonna go look for our current tack time. We're on the home page of ETA. From the home page, we're going to go to reports. Then on the left side again, ETA core reports. Then we have our aircraft list. We're going to click this purple button that's right to the left of that. To narrow down our search, we're going to go ahead and go to aircraft type C172. And then we're going to click the PDF button, the one on the far left. We're looking for our aircraft on the left. We're K-State 18 right here. We're going over to the TAC, which is 913.9. .9. We're going to go put that on our sheet of paper. Okay, so on the computer on ETA, we found out that our TAC time was 913.9. .9. So when we add that to our number that we previously got, we get 7,784.0. 
and this is the number that we're going to write on our sheet, and this is the number that we are going to compare with uh, the rest of the maintenance checks to make sure that no number is smaller than our current tack time, which is, again is this number. Uh, if it is smaller than this number, then it means that there needs to be some sort of maintenance done, some sort of check, uh, so we wouldn't be able to fly that day. So um, we're just gonna remember that number right there, set that to the side real quick. And right here where it says current tack time, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna focus this up a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and write 7,784. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, next, we're just going right down the, the columns here, right down the row. We have our annual. So we're checking on our list and we're looking for our annual. It's this first one right here. We're going to go across and we see that it's not due until July of 2021. So it's January, so we're good there. We're going to come back and write 07 of 21. Our phase is our next one. We're looking up here. Um, in particular, this time we're looking at our 50 hour. So we're always looking in the overdue column for these numbers. I failed to mention that. We're always looking in the overdue column. So we see that our 50 hour or our phase is due at 7788. We're gonna write that, 7788. If we can see here, comparing it to our attack uh, time, it is due in four hours, but it's not due quite yet. It's not past our total tack time. So we are good to go and still fly. Our static system, uh, we're checking our sheet again. Uh, we're looking down the row here. We see our static system is right here, static system certificate. We're scrolling over to the side, just going right across. And we see that that's new, not due until January of 2022. So we're gonna write that in 02 of 2022. <clears throat> and again, our static system, that is what we're gonna use uh, in order to get information on our aircraft, our altitude, as well as our airspeed, um, as well as our VSI, which is your vertical, vertical speed indicator. That's where we get all that information from. So we're making sure that we're gonna be able to receive that information but we know that it's still good because it's not due until February of 2022. Our next one is our transponder. So we're going down back to our list here. We're looking down the row. We're looking for transponder. Here it is right here. Transponder certification, uh, certification, whoops. We're going across. We see it's not due until January of 2022. So that's what we're writing in our box again. 01 of 2022. ELT battery, our emergency location transponder. This is, we're coming down, we're looking, we're looking. Um, and forgive me, I didn't mark these out before, so uh, I'm just looking as you're looking. And it's right here. This is our ELT battery replacement. So we're coming down here. It's not due until July of 2023, and I just realized you can't see that. It's right down here, July of 2023. And so that's what we're gonna put in our next box. 07 of 23. ELT inspection, we're going back down, looking at our list again. ELT inspection, it's the second one right here. We're going over again, not due until July of 2021. So 07 of 21. And our GPS, so for this one, uh, it gets updated every 30 days. So we're gonna have to flip the page and go to the next page, which is our GPS uh, navigational database updates. So we're looking in this second column right here, database expiration date. It says January 28th of 2021. So we're gonna write that in there. That's due in two days. So 1-28-21. We're gonna set that back to the side there. Next is our discrepancies page. Um, this is anything that the aircraft may have broken on it. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we're not gonna be flying with anything that hasn't been fixed yet. 
just as a reminder, an easy way to find this in the book, in the purple book, is most of the sheets are white. Flip until you see the blue sheet. Uh, this is the deferred discrepancies. This is something that you can fly with uh, that is not necessarily required and it can be fixed later. Uh, there's also another white sheet that says just aircraft um, discrepancies. If there's anything on that white discrepancy sheet, you need to uh, come and talk to me or talk to somebody in the flight operations area and see if it's okay for you to fly that aircraft. It's most likely not going to be. I forgot to print that one out, so we're just going to pretend like we already looked at the white one. There's nothing on there. We see that there's a discrepancy here in the turn coordinator. Um, we're coming over here. It has been corrected. They have dated it, and they have signed it. So that means that it has been fixed. So what we can go ahead and do is mark an X through it. Uh, that means that we're good, we checked it, and there's no discrepancies. The next one is your ADs. ADs stand for Advisor, uh, excuse me, Airworthiness Directives is what it stands for, actually. Um, so we're coming down here. Uh, we see that there's an AD right here. There's an AD right here, and there's an AD right here. You have an AD for your air filter, uh, your oil pressure switch, as well as your ignition switch. So uh, just a little background on what an Airworthiness Directive is. It is um, a part or uh, some sort of inspection that gets done after the aircraft has come out of the manufacturer. So it is something that is added on at a later point. The FAA and or the manufacturer has said this part needs to be added to your aircraft. And that is what an AD is. For our ADs we are picking the lowest of the three here. So we have three on this aircraft. We're gonna pick the lowest overdue number. So we see that the uh, um, air filter has a number of 7791. The oil pressure switch has a number of 8738. And the ignition switch has a number of 8893. So our lowest one is our air uh, air filter and it is at 7791. So we're gonna go ahead and write that in our AD next due. That's what it's talking about, which one is next due. That's why we're picking the lowest one. And again, that number is 7791.7. Next is our VOR check. Uh, this one is in the actual key book of the aircraft. That is how you see when the next, or uh, excuse me, the last VOR check was done. Um, you're not going to really have to worry about this on this particular sheet, just because, uh, as you can see here, it says for IFR only. Uh, as part of the pilots, we're just going to be flying VFR, so you can go ahead and put an X through that. I will show you once we get to the plane how you can update the VOR. There's a way to do it. Uh, as soon as you pull out of the ramp, it's on the ground, and I will show you that uh, once we get to the flying portion. Next is asking for the registration, aircraft registration. Uh, just like your car has a registration, your aircraft also has a registration. We can see that it is right here. Aircraft registration, we're coming over, we're seeing when that is due. It is not due until January of 2024, so that's what we're going to write. 01 of 24, and that uh, is how you do the maintenance checks uh, through the purple book. Um, as we can see, none of our numbers are lower than 7784. We're just double-checking here, though, just in case we miss something. But we see that all of our numbers are bigger, which means that we haven't quite got to... Um, that specific maintenance check. Uh, and also we're checking our dates. That's why we write our date up here in the corner because some of them have dates and not specific times, not specific tack times. So we can see that we're not quite uh, to the point where we need any of these maintenance checks. So um, we're good to go there. Next, we're gonna move on to the performance section of this uh, sheet. And I'm going to pause the video and uh, just create a new shot of this. Okay, so this is the performance section 
of the Cessna 172 pre-flight sheet. Um, for this section, you're gonna have to flip basically to the end of the book to this sheet right here, the weight and balance sheet. So we're looking at the weight and balance sheet. Uh, the first question that's asking is what is your max weight for this aircraft? And our R models, uh, they're pretty much all the same. This may be a little hard to see down here. It's the very last one. This is a pretty dark picture, but it's 2,450 pounds is what that says. So we're gonna write that in there. 2,450 pounds. Next, it's asking what is your pressure altitude? And we need this in order for us to be able to um, figure out what our ground roll is gonna be for our takeoff and landing. So in order to find your pressure altitude, you're gonna need to figure out what your current altimeter is. And again, just a quick reminder, you can find that uh, either by calling the airport uh, ATIS, which is a phone number. I can give that phone number to you. Um, it's also if you go to the airport informations tab on ForeFlight and or Garmin Pilot, you can find the weather on there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it up on the iPad and show you guys. Okay, so once you have your iPad pulled up and you have your ForeFlight or Garmin Pilot up as well, uh, I use ForeFlight, but it works on both. You can go ahead and click on the Salina Regional Airport. You can go to Weather, and this is all your current weather at the moment um, from your METAR. So we're trying to figure out what our pressure altitude is. So in order to find your pressure altitude, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to move this real quick. We're going to take our current altimeter. We see our current altimeter. Whoops, sorry, you cannot see that. Our current altimeter is 3009, is what that says. So we're gonna take our current altimeter, 3009, and subtract it from our standard pressure, uh, which is 2992. We're gonna see what that equals. I am horrendous at math, so if you are too, grab your calculator we get 0.17. So we're gonna write that over here, 0 0.17. Now that's not really a number that's workable for us. So we're gonna go ahead and times that by a thousand and uh, it should give us 170 feet, which it does. So that is what we're gonna put for our pressure altitude. So right down here, the second box, we're gonna put uh, 170 feet. And now for our density altitude, uh, there is a way you can calculate your density altitude either through your electronic E6B or through your uh, manual E6B. But the easiest way is either again to call the airport ATIS um, or I like to just use the iPad one right here. It's usually at the bottom for four flight. Uh, so we have negative 993 for our density altitude, which yes, it can be a negative number. Uh, that's no problem. Both these pressure altitude and um, density altitude can be negative numbers. So don't feel like you did something incorrect if uh, you get a negative number. So now that we have those two, we can go ahead and flip to our performance charts. Our first one it's asking for is the takeoff ground roll. Um, so with that current information that we have, uh, again, of 170, we can look at our chart. We know that it is, um, our pressure altitude is 170. So that's pretty close to sea level. Sea level is also zero feet is another way you can think of that, but we call it sea level. Um, and our temperature, I did not show you guys the temperature, but the temperature as we can see, sorry about that glare, is uh, negative five degrees Celsius. So that's pretty close to zero. Um, so we're just gonna use zero for this example. Uh, so we line them up, we see our ground roll right here. And again, that's what it's asking for, your takeoff ground roll. You go to a thousand, or excuse me, you go to sea level, which is pretty much what we're at. 
and you go to zero degrees, you go down, we're gonna roll a hundred, uh, geez, sorry, 845 feet is what we're gonna put there. That's our ground roll on takeoff. Take off over a 50 foot obstacle. So how long is it gonna take us to get over that 50 foot obstacle? And this one, I forgot to tell you, takeoff ground roll is um, basically how long is it gonna take us to reach the speed in order for us to take off. So now we're looking at this column over here, uh, take off over a 50 foot obstacle. We're gonna do the same thing, zero degrees, sea level. It's gonna take us 1,510 feet to get over that 50 foot obstacle. So that's what we're gonna put right there. Uh, usually on the next page, right next to it, sometimes it's a few pages away, you're gonna be looking for the one that says short field landing distance. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, do basically the same thing. We're gonna use our pressure altitude that we have. Again, we're gonna use sea level and zero degrees. It's gonna take us 525 feet for the landing ground roll. And over the 50 foot obstacle, it's gonna take us 1,250, 250. So uh, that is the uh, performance section of our chart here so let me know if you have any questions on that section okay this is the speed section uh, we're going over our v speeds here um, our v speeds are various speeds uh, that we use while we're flying you can find some of these in the purple book as well uh, it's under air speed limitations um, I'm just going to be going over each one. I'm also going to insert a picture at the very end of the speed section uh, that I did with one of my students today, and it explains all the speeds with the description uh, plus the speed right next to it. So um, the first one is VSO. This is your stall speed in uh, your landing configuration. You have full flaps is basically what it's saying. And this speed is going to be 33. The next speed is VS, which is your stall speed in the clean configuration, meaning uh, your um, flaps are all the way up. So this is 44. VX is referring to your best angle of attack. Um, what that means is it's going to get you the most... Uh, altitude in the shortest amount of time or in the allotted amount of time uh, so that one is going to be 60 our VY is our best rate of climb so that is going to be um, the most distance in a certain allotted of time this one is 79 your VA, that is your maneuvering speed. So your maneuvering speed is uh, what you want to do maneuvers at. So if we're going to do uh, steep turns or uh, some other maneuver, we are, excuse me, uh, we are going to want to be below that, excuse me, I got the hiccups. Um, you're going to want to be below that maneuvering speed. Uh, just like when you're driving a car and you're going super fast, you slow down to turn in uh, to your neighborhood or whatever the case is. You don't take the turn at 90 miles an hour or you'll flip over. Same uh, basic concept in an airplane. Um, we could have something else happen though. The wings, I mean, a very drastic example would be the wings falling off. So uh, this one is 99 slash 90. Your maneuvering speed changes with your weight. Um, so depending on what weight you're at, you're going to change your maneuvering speed. But uh, on our sheet, I just want to see you write 99 slash 90 on there. VFE is your flap extension speed. So when can you lower your flaps? What speed do you have to be at is basically what this is asking um or you want to be below that speed so this one also has two it's 110 slash 85 our first notch of flaps or 10 degrees of flaps uh, can start coming down at 110 once we're below 110 and once we're below 85 we can bring down that second and third notch of flaps which is 20 degrees and 30 degrees
our V and O. This is normal operating range. Um, I'll put up a picture to where you can see this right in between here. Uh, this is basically the end of the green arc is where this speed occurs. Uh, then it goes to the yellow arc and then the red line. Uh, the yellow arc is kind of the caution area. That's where you only want to fly past that speed if you are in smooth air. If you are in turbulent air, you want to just stay in the green operating range. And that speed is 129. Um, moving on to V and E. V and E stands for never exceed speed. So N E never exceed this in our airplanes um, is 163, so you never want to go past 163 knots. And your glide, uh, this is the speed in which you're going to be able to stay in the air the longest, assuming you have an engine out failure or some sort of emergency where you need to glide as long as possible while you're looking for your um, landing spot, where you're going to land. You're also going to tell people where you're at. So you're going to want to pitch for this airspeed. And this is 65 knots. So that is the speed section, the V speed section of our uh, worksheet here. Okay, moving on to our weather section. Uh, this is asking you to basically pull out your iPad again, or again, you can call the Salina ATIS and get the information from that as well. Um, so first one, it's asking for wind direction. Uh, where is the wind coming from? Your wind, uh, just a quick reminder, your wind comes from that magnetic heading, so it comes from 050, um, and then your runways go towards the magnetic heading. So runway 35 is a northern runway. It goes towards the north. Um, this wind is 050, so it's a northeast wind. It comes from the northeast. So it's asking wind direction and velocity. Wind is at 050 degrees uh, at 8 knots. Visibility, we can see right here it says 10 statute miles. So we're just going to write that down. Clouds, it's asking where the clouds at. Um, it is overcast at 1300 feet. So we're just going to write OVC uh, at 1300 feet. It is asking what our temperature is. Our temperature is negative 5 degrees Celsius. Dew point is also right below temperature. It is negative 7 degrees Celsius. Altimeter, again right below dew point, is 3009. Runway in use. So again, this is where we have to choose which runway we're going to use. Um, for example, uh, we're looking at where the wind is coming from, so that's why we just wrote it down. Uh, for our uh, operations, we're mostly going to be using runway 17 and 35. So the question is, uh, which runway are we going to use, 17 or 35? Are we going to use the northern runway or the southern runway? So we know that our wind is coming from 050, which if you can see my pencil, I'm going to use the point. That is going to be the direction of the wind. The wind is coming from basically this direction right here. If this is north, this is south, east, uh, west. It is coming from this direction. So we always want to have a headwind when we take off. So the best runway for us right now is runway 35. Because we know runway 35 is going north this way. So we're going to have a bit of a crosswind, but it's better to have a... Uh, headwind slash crosswind, then I have a tailwind, a quarterly tailwind. So we're going to use runway 35. So we're just going to write RW35. Then it's asking, what is the headwind slash crosswind component? Again, if we're on our weathers page, we're going to go up, I don't know if you can see that or not, to our runways page at the very top here. We're going to click on that. Scroll down to runway 1735. We're looking at runway 35. That's the runway we decided to take off on. This arrow that is going uh, either right or left is telling you that is a crosswind. So you have a six knot 
crosswind, and you have a five knot headwind. So we're gonna ride five knots there. The TAF, terminal aerodrome for forecast, excuse me. Uh, that is kind of like a prediction uh, into the future, a forecast. So just like on your weather channel, they give you the forecast for the day. Um, the forecast up here, uh, basically this is the TAF up here. Um, and you also have your TAF section over here. So what I'm going to want you to do is basically just uh, copy the TAF down and put it in the TAF section right here. Um, I'm going to do that off camera because I don't want to write all that and you guys just be watching me write. So I'll come right back. All right, so I have written that out there. Move my iPad so you can see written out the TAF. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next section, which asks for your NOTAMs. We are going to look on our iPad, click inform, uh, excuse me, actually there's a whole tab for NOTAMs. Uh, we're just looking at uh, the future as well as today, specifically today if we're flying today, um, <laughs> obviously. Uh, so this NOTAM right here is telling you that uh, runway 4 and runway 22 are closed, effective January 26th, and expires the 27th, so it expires tomorrow. Uh, so what I want you to do is, whoops, that just went away. What I want you to do is write the NOTAMs down that are uh, pertaining to today. So you see that there's quite a few. There's one, two, th uh, one, two, three, four, five. There are five that are uh, effective right now as of January 26th. Um, basically just saying, so let's take this one for example. Uh, runway, Salina Runway uh, 1, 2, and 3, 0 is closed. Doesn't need to be anything super long, just type something, or uh, excuse me, write something like that on there. Uh, runway 1, 2, slash 3, 0 closed. That's all you have to say. Uh, so just write all those down in the NOTAM section down here.